Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing another proposition, explanation, and another theory when it comes to Fermi paradox. The paradox of not detecting or seeing any advanced extraterrestrial intelligence anywhere out there. Because as of 2023, we still have not had any significant evidence, or actually even insignificant evidence, of anything super advanced anywhere out there. And so in today's video, we're going to be discussing one of the most recent propositions by one of the more iconic scientists when it comes to Fermi paradox that tries to explain some of these observations, or I guess, lack of observations, with the theory itself known as Grabby Aliens. A pretty unusual name, but I'm going to explain why it's called that in a few seconds. So first of all, this new idea is proposed by Robin Hansen, the same person who proposed the Great Filter back in 1998. You can learn a little bit more about this in the description below. And in his previous explanation, he essentially summarized the evolution of life and eventually intelligence as a kind of a step process involving several extremely difficult to overpass barriers that most life out there probably just does not pass. And he called these barriers the Great Filter. I mean, that's a very brief summary, but you can learn more about this in the description below. It's also to some extent based on previous propositions that we've discussed in one of the videos in the description that's sometimes referred to as the hard tippler conjecture. The conjecture being that there are probably no aliens out there, because statistically they should be everywhere and we should be seeing them at all times, and some should have already arrived to planet Earth or even conquered the entire galaxy. At least that's what the statistics tells us. But since it hasn't happened, and since we don't see any signs of anything out there, the conjecture concludes that advanced civilizations probably do not exist. But there are obviously other conjectures or other propositions that also use statistics to propose the presence of aliens possibly everywhere. They should be ubiquitous and pretty much all over the place. Which brings us back to that original question of why are we not seeing anyone? And today most of the resolutions of Fermi Paradox kind of focus on three things. First resolution is of course, we are alone. There is nobody out there anywhere else. But if we're not alone, maybe we are one of the earliest species out there, which is why we're not seeing anyone. Or maybe we're just in such a weird location where none of these signals or none of the signs from other civilizations has actually reached us yet. In other words, wrong place, wrong time. And that's the main basis behind the Grappy Aliens. The assumption here is that a lot of civilizations are most likely born in a very similar way to humanity, but some were born much sooner than others, with humanity in our location in the galaxy simply being one of the first and possibly one of the most advanced. But also proposing that you can actually divide aliens into two main types. Either quiet aliens, or kind of similar to what humanity is right now, not producing a lot of noise, not really creating a lot of fuss out there in a galaxy, and the loud aliens, which would do the opposite, creating a lot of techno signatures, possibly conquering a lot of worlds, and being exceptionally loud and exceptionally visible. And according to them, most aliens are probably quiet, either because they haven't really evolved enough, or because they choose to be quiet and have no reason to expand, or possibly for some other reasons. But once in a while, one of the species becomes loud, chooses to expand dramatically, becomes exceptionally advanced, possibly expands across the galaxy or even several galaxies, and in the process creates a lot of noise and a lot of techno signatures. And at some point in the future, some of these loud alien species should also reach planet Earth and of course, become easily detectable from here as well. It's just they haven't yet. And so to try to answer some of these questions and to try to calculate when this might happen, the scientists behind this recent study made a few assumptions. For example, the assumption on how fast a species would need to expand and move across the galaxy in order to be at some point visible from everywhere else. There's also the assumption for what the scientists refer to as the birth power, or basically these great filters that the life has to overcome in order to at some point evolve advanced intelligence. And also birth constant or basically the proportion of loud aliens to quiet aliens, which is of course the biggest assumption. At the moment nobody really knows if other civilizations or even humanity at some point are going to become what the scientists refer to as loud. Are we ever going to reach the point where a lot of our activity can actually be seen and heard by someone on the other side of the galaxy? At the moment everything we do on Earth is practically invisible even from the nearest star system. But here they did make an assumption that maybe once in a while, possibly one in 10,000 or even one in a million of these civilizations would eventually become loud 
and potentially create a lot of noise. And they also make several other assumptions, such as, for example, that right now is probably the better time to be some kind of life somewhere out there, because the universe is a lot more quiet and a lot less active. And also that it takes possibly around 4 billion years for a typical advanced civilization to evolve on a typical planet. And that's, of course, another really big assumption. Although we do know that modern humans existed for approximately 200,000 years out of 4 billion years of evolutionary process. But it's only in the last 70 years that we actually became aware of various ways of communicating with potential intelligence out there. Nevertheless, here the scientists do assume that some civilizations probably had a bit of a head start. And some might have even advanced much, much farther than us and reached a completely new level. And so overall, the assumption here is that the majority of advanced life forms are probably going to appear much, much later than today. And humans are very likely an early arrival, but quite unlikely to be the first. And so considering all of these assumptions and all of these propositions, what exactly do the scientists eventually calculate in their recent paper? Well, first, based on the lack of observation from our own galaxy, the statistical calculations suggest that maybe only one in one million galaxies today would contain a loud civilization. And more specifically, a grabby loud civilization. Grabby in a sense that it would want to expand, become larger and larger over time, and eventually colonize the entire galaxy and possibly even beyond. And once those grabby civilizations expand to a certain region, it's quite likely that they would actually not allow other advanced civilizations to evolve enough to be noticeable. Okay, once again, a pretty big assumption, but that's the assumption that's sort of being made here. Or just to rephrase this, the scientists suggest that there is a kind of a deadline to emerge as a complex civilization before your region of space gets taken over by a loud grabby civilization. And at some point, they also suggest that the universe is going to be filled up with various volumes of space occupied entirely by that specific civilization. In this image, you may see that it also forms a kind of a border. And here the scientists went a little bit further and even created a computer simulation demonstrating what all of this might sort of look like in real time, assuming that it actually does happen for the next few billions of years. And you'll notice that in approximately 10 billion years from now, pretty much everything becomes more or less occupied by someone somewhere out there. And at that point, no new space is available, and the entire visible sphere right here, with a diameter of about 22 billion light years, is essentially occupied by just 87 grabby civilizations. And all of this obviously looks like some kind of a space video game, like Stellaris or something, where a lot of different civilizations fight for space. But the main point here is that this is what they got from the simulations and from the calculations based on those previous assumptions I explained in the beginning. So basically, some civilizations appeared billions of years ago, many of them started a little bit later, only one in about 10,000, or even less than that, becomes a loud gravy civilization, essentially conquering the universe one galaxy at a time, and as they do so, they become extremely easily visible, with a lot of signs of active technosignatures. What exactly happens to all those quiet civilizations that don't actually show any signs is not a question that's being tackled in this paper. They might become part of the empire, they might be ignored, or they might join the empire and become one of them. But I guess more interestingly, based on these parameters, if you look at the current universe, which is somewhere right around here, the assumption here is that at least half of the entire volume of the universe is already filled with various potentially visible alien civilizations. It just, we are not able to see them because we're not in the right place. With some of these circles that you're about to see here possibly being much bigger than the full moon, if we were to somehow see them in the night skies with each of them eventually controlling anywhere from 100,000 to possibly 30 million galaxies. That's a lot of galaxies. But the question here is, of course, when would we actually hear them or see them? Well, based on this model and based on all of these calculations, not anytime soon. It might actually take anywhere from 200 million to possibly 2 billion years for the nearest loud civilization to be detectable by Earthlings. And by then, we might even become one ourselves. But I guess more importantly, at the moment, it looks like detecting any techno signatures according to this model would be practically impossible. So one of the conclusions from this paper is that SETI research might actually never find anything. But this study also suggests that it's quite likely that our galaxy might have never had these loud civilizations and might never even have one. Which means that by the time planet Earth can no longer support life, there might still be nothing visible or audible from planet Earth. So definitely a somewhat intriguing proposition and something that is worth exploring. But there are obviously quite a lot of criticisms and especially biased criticisms that need to be addressed here as well. And so let's address just some of them. 
For example, just like with other Fermi paradox propositions, the main weakness is the assumption of universal alien behavior. We kind of assume that everyone is going to act like humans, with the specific assumption being imperialism. We make an assumption that these allowed aliens would want to conquer the universe, or that half of the universe is already conquered. Now, this might make sense if you're playing some kind of a space video game, such as, once again, Stellaris, where that is the main goal and that's how you get score. But realistically, even as humans, we don't always focus on conquest. For example, land grab usually only happens for specific reasons. Sometimes resources, sometimes religion, sometimes prestige. So a lot of the reasoning here is very, very anthropomorphic. It's very human-centered. And so here, trying to understand the motivation for different alien species to conquer the galaxy or the universe should not really be approached from a human lens. I think a better approach would be to maybe look at something more primitive, like, for example, ants. Ants tend to actually colonize and tend to expand dramatically, but here this is very often driven by resources. So these aliens would have to probably have resources that they need from other stars, or even other galaxies. What exactly those resources would be is not really a question that's tackled here, and it's not a question that we can answer either. For example, right now on Earth, I can't imagine what we might need as a resource from, for example, a nearby Proxima Centauri. So the question of motivation is really important. But I guess that particular question could be answered if we made an assumption that these particular sentient species are no longer sentient, or basically they somehow lose their ability to think for themselves, once again, kind of like ants, and instead become literally driven by colonization and expansion itself. In other words, there might be a species out there whose whole goal in life is to actually grow bigger. And these are definitely not the aliens we would want to meet because they would not want to communicate at all. As a matter of fact, it would be even difficult to call these aliens an advanced intelligence because in some sense they would maybe lose this intelligence as they would only want to propagate and grow larger. And at the moment this would make the most sense because if the alien species was still sentient and able to communicate and eventually ended up colonizing several galaxies, there would be no practical way for these aliens to communicate with one another because of the speed of light limit. Okay, well, let me give you a clear example here. Imagine humans colonize the Andromeda galaxy, and imagine the humans now would want to communicate with the Andromedans. It would take roughly around 5 million years for us to get the signal back from them. Physically, there's really no way for us to communicate faster than light. And it actually breaks a lot of different paradoxes, so it's practically impossible. In these 5 million years, the evolution would create a completely new species. And so here, communicating between galaxies would actually make no sense whatsoever. Likewise, traveling to these destinations would also be practically impossible. And so a lot of these grabby aliens would probably become pure replicators and completely lose intelligence and sentience. And if they do so, any civilization that forms within their vicinity, or any civilization that essentially forms after a certain point in the existence of the universe, is pretty much doomed. It's unlikely that they're going to develop into anything afterwards, because the replicators would very likely not allow it. But I guess the important part from this assumption is that they would also very unlikely want to communicate, because their main goal, their instinct, is to grow larger and to expand. So an intriguing proposition, maybe a somewhat scary proposition, but based on the calculations, we have nothing to worry about for millions and millions of years. But also, we're probably not going to find anything. But this is of course something that only relates to these loud aliens. It tells us nothing about the quiet aliens that could exist right here in the Milky Way, that we're just not seeing or hearing, but that could actually communicate and maybe even want to communicate. Aliens like us, that are developed enough to understand communication, but just don't really know where to start. And so there's still maybe a chance that someone is out there. But whether we actually ever find them is a question nobody can answer just yet. So at least for now, Fermi Paradox remains paradoxical. Anyway, on that note, check out previous videos on the Paradox and other similar videos in the description below. Stay tuned for more videos in the next few weeks. Subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.